Hello and welcome to my video. My name is Chuck Holmes. I'm the founder of parttimecommander.com. I want to thank you for stopping by and watching this video today. In today's video, we're going to talk about command team relationships in the Army. This is going to be a helpful training for any commander or any NCO working with a commander trying to develop a successful command team relationship. So let's start by talking about what is a command team relationship. It is when an officer and an NCO work together to accomplish the unit's mission and take care of the soldiers. Remember that, accomplish the mission, take care of soldiers. If you can do those two things, everything in your command team relationship is gonna work fine. The command team is the nucleus of the organization. They each have unique roles that support each other to be productive, to be effective. When it's done right, a command team relationship is like a marriage. It's a beautiful thing. And when it's done wrong, it is like a nightmare. It's like two people about to get divorced who hate each other. So you should make it your goal to have a successful command team relationship, whether you're the officer or whether you're the NCO. So let's first talk about what is the role of each person. And keep in mind, this is just my opinion based off being an officer for 11 years. Doctrine may dictate otherwise. Policies do change. And of course, duty positions do have somewhat of an impact in this, but this is going to be a 95% solution. So the officer and the NCO have very distinct roles. Where things get complicated is when one of those two people goes into the other person's lane or they don't do their own job effectively. No one should have to do both person's job. If the NCO does their job, if the officer does their job, it's going to work beautifully, just like a marriage, like we covered earlier. So the officer they are in most cases responsible for the strategy and mission planning, mission accomplishment, future operations, remember that word, establish policies and procedures. They set the vision for the organization. They enforce the Army standards. They create the culture in the unit. They focus on the collective training and they focus on the big picture. That's what the officer, in most cases, that's going to be 95% or more of your job description in the command team relationship. Now, the NCO, the NCO has a different job, yet equally important. They manage the day-to-day -day operations of the unit. They are also focused on a mission accomplishment. They have a big impact on soldier morale. They handle soldier discipline. They're running the current operations. They also enforce the Army standards. They support the commander in their intent, and they focus on individual training. The officer is doing the collective training. The NCO is working on individual training. So let me just give you a few tips for success I had the distinct pleasure of being a company commander for two years. I was in several other important positions where I got to work closely with a seasoned NCO. Basically, that's where I learned most of this from, is from working with them and from learning from their experience. And if you're an officer, I would tell you this, if you're not listening to your NCO, you're being a fool. You really want to leverage their expertise, their experience. Sure, they might not be right 100% of the time, but they have a lot more experience in most cases than you do. Uh, and they want to see you succeed. So humble yourselves, especially if you're a brand new officer, humble yourself to listen to your NCO. They want you to succeed because if they help you succeed, they succeed as well and the unit succeeds. So if you want to have a great command team relationship, the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure you're always putting the mission first. It's not about you. It's not about your NCO. It's really about the mission. Is your mission, is your unit, excuse me, are they trained? Are they motivated? Do they have the skill and the will to get their job done? Can you rely on them? Are they trained in their wartime task? Do they receive a mission and accomplish it on time and to standard? If you're doing that, even if you get nothing else right, you're probably going to have a pretty good command team relationship. Number two, taking care of soldiers. So the mission is always number one in the Army, but a very close second place is taking care of your soldiers. If you take care of your people, your people are going to take care of you. It's a pretty simple concept that a lot of people mess up, but you want to make sure your soldiers are getting the schools they need. If there's a pay problem, it needs to get fixed. If there is an issue with some of their paperwork, you need to get it fixed. Any, any type of problem, you are really in the people business as a leader, and you need to make sure your soldiers are taken care of. No, you're not their babysitter. No, you're not their parent but you're somewhere in between those two things and you're making sure that fires are getting put out and that problems are getting solved. You're basically a, a people problem solver. Number three, establish lanes. You need to sit down with your counterpart and identify who is responsible for what. This is gonna solve almost every problem you could have in a command team relationship. If you sit down and you say, look, Sergeant, 
this is going to be what you're responsible for. This is what I'm going to be responsible for. You can write that down. You can post it on the bulletin board. And when an issue comes up, you can quickly look at it and know who is responsible for what. So you're not stepping on each other's toes, going in each other's lane, micromanaging each other or pissing each other off. You don't want to do that. The next one, you want to be unified in public. So what does this mean? This means that, well, you're going to have problems, all right? Every relationship has problems. Every relationship has challenges. But you deal with that behind closed doors. Problems are expected. If your relationship, your command team relationship never has problems, you either aren't doing a very good job or you're fooling yourself. But you handle it behind closed doors because it's really no one else's business. But when you are out in public, the officer and the NCO need to be unified. They need to be on the same sheet of paper, especially in front of their troops. Because if the officer is saying one thing and the NCO is saying something different and they see conflict, your soldiers see conflict between the two of you, you're not going to be effective. Another part of a command team relationship is trust. Just like a marriage, you have to be able to trust each other. But trust goes both ways. It's not just the NCO trusting the officer. It's also the officer trusting the NCO. And I believe trust is given until it's proven otherwise. So you should trust your counterpart unless they give you a reason not to. But if you can't trust each other, you're not going to make it as a command team. You have to have each other's back. You have to be on the same sheet of paper. And like I mentioned earlier, if there is an issue, the two of you have to fix that behind closed doors as professionals. The next one is communication. You can see a lot of these qualities are just like a good, healthy marriage or, or a good relationship. But communication is key. As an officer and NCO, you can't read your counterpart's mind, nor should you. If there is an issue, the two of you should be able to talk freely about it in private, behind closed doors, and work it out. If, as an officer, you have put a barrier there that your NCO can't approach you with an issue, you have set them up for failure, you set your unit up for failure. They should be able to approach you about anything, even something that you're doing wrong. You should humble yourself and be able to handle that in private, behind closed doors, not in public. You're probably noticing that trend. You want to handle things in private, not in public. Respect. So I see a lot of officers and NCOs where there's respect issues. Maybe they don't like the person. Maybe there's a personality conflict. Maybe they're, maybe someone said something or did something at one time, and for whatever reason, they don't respect them. If nothing else, you need to respect their rank and their duty position. You don't have to like them as a person. You don't have to be their best buddy, nor should you. But you do need to respect their rank. You do need to respect their duty position. And it would help if you respected them as a person, but it's not mandatory. The next one is loyalty. I don't believe in blind loyalty, but I do believe in loyalty if you want a command team relationship. If you are putting the mission first, if you are taking care of your soldiers, if you are communicating effectively, loyalty really shouldn't be a problem. But here's the thing. If you have an issue with your counterpart, you don't need to be talking to your peers about it. You need to be talking to your counterpart about it so that the two of you can work it out so you can be functional. It's kind of like Facebook. You know, people on Facebook, they have a problem with their boss or their spouse, and they vent it all over Facebook, but they don't even talk to that person in private and try to resolve it. The last thing you want to do is put your business out there in public so everybody can know about it. Resolve it behind closed doors. You'll get it figured out. The next one, a shared vision. So what does a shared vision mean? Well, if you have the mission first, if you're taking care of your soldiers and you both agree that's important, that's probably a shared vision. If you want the unit to be successful, that is a shared vision. If everything is about you, if you're a narcissist and it's only about you and your career and you ranking up, you're probably not going to be successful. But if you're putting the mission first, the soldiers right there with the mission and you're working together and it's all about those two things, you'll have a shared vision. And you'll be fine. The next one is empathy. And this one's really for the officers. I guess it would benefit NCOs as well, too. But, and, and I'll be the first to admit, this is not my strong point. As Army leaders, whether you're an NCO or an officer, you're taught to be firm but fair. You're taught to be almost brash, me, brash, mentally tough, uh, not to be, you know, I don't even know what the word is, but not to be empathetic. In fact, most, most officers and NCOs are not very good uh, at this. The ladies in general are a lot better at this than the guys are. But as guys... Uh, in, in an officer or NCO capacity. This is something we could all work on. Remember this, everybody you lead, everybody you work with were people. People are going to let you down from time to time. People do dumb things. People say dumb things. Uh, no one is perfect. Having a little bit of empathy from time to time 
it's pretty good. Being a little forgiving from time to time is pretty good. Now, of course, there's there's certain deal breakers that obviously are hard to forgive. But most things you could be you would benefit greatly in your command team relationship by having a little bit of empathy. Uh, it goes a long ways. So why do command team relationships fail? They fail because all the things we just covered, people mess it up. All right. Now, most command team relationships are pretty good. Most of the ones I've seen or, or worked with or experienced in the military, they were at least effective. Maybe they weren't perfect because nothing's perfect, but they were pretty good because the officer and the NCO understood this. But the reason they fail, lack of trust is probably the biggest one. Poor communication. Basically, they're not talking with each other. Undefined roles. They're each doing each other's job. They don't even know what each other's job is. And they get in each other's lane and they turn into resenting each other for it. No respect. This is another very common one. Maybe you don't like the personality of the person you're working with. Maybe you don't like the way they look. And as a way, you don't respect them. That's stupid, though. Uh, respect the rank. Respect the duty position. You can't go wrong. But if you don't respect each other, the two of you need to get that sorted out quickly. The next one, personality conflict. This is another common one. Maybe you're both type A, over aggressive. You got to humble yourselves and get through that. You got to figure out who's going to do what. And you got to figure out, you got to put your personalities aside because personality really doesn't matter in the job. What matters is, is the mission getting done? Are the soldiers being taken care of? And are you both working together to make the unit better? Another one is ego. This is really, especially for the officers. Hey, I, and I'm a former officer. I get it. Maybe you think you walk on water. You don't. Okay. Remember that you don't. Don't, don't be so egotistical in your job that you think you're, you're better or more important than your counterpart. The, the, the officer is not more important. The NCO is not more important. You're both equally important if you do your job effectively. Uh, incompetent. This, as you move up through the ranks, this happens less and less because a lot of the bad people get weeded out. Yeah, there's still people who slip through the cracks. But if you have an officer that's completely incompetent or you have an NCO that's completely incompetent, guess what? You're going to have to carry the load for them. But I hope you're documenting everything. I hope you're putting everything in writing. If you have someone who's not motivated, not skilled, it makes your job that much more difficult because you're carrying the weight of two people. But you might have to do that. I see it a lot. There's one good person. Maybe it's the NCO. Maybe it's the officer. The other one's a slacker or they're just they're just in over their head and they're not qualified for that job. And the other one really has to pick up the slack. And I hate seeing that happen, but it happens. So in summary. We've covered a lot today. We've talked a lot about command team relationships. If you have the honor of being in a command team relationship, whether you're a first sergeant, a sergeant major, you're a captain, maybe you're a lieutenant colonel, battalion commander, or maybe even echelons above that, your command team relationship is important. Your success really boils down to your ability to work effectively with your counterpart. I hope you will invest as much time in developing a good command team relationship with your counterpart as you do helping your unit become successful. Because if the two of you work together, it truly is just like a good marriage. When a husband and wife are working together and they're on the same sheet of paper, they are unstoppable. When a NCO and an officer are harmonious, when they're joined at the hip, when they're each doing their job and they're, they have pride in what they do and they're working hard and they're, they're putting the mission first and the soldiers first and the unit first, they are unstoppable. It is a beautiful thing to see. But when it is dysfunctional, it is a nightmare. So I hope you got some value from today's video. I hope you'll think about some of the things I talked about. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe on this channel. We're trying to grow this channel quickly. Also, you can visit the description box below this video to check out some resources that I share about this subject. You can also head on over to my website and read about this topic. Thanks again for your service. I hope you have a great day. Don't forget to check out my other videos.